Greetings everyone and welcome back to the Base Blaster Audio Tech YouTube channel. In this video we have this IC Station TPA 3116D2 amplifier board model uh, XY502. This video, oh, eh, I got a couple little plans with this board. I've had this board about a month now. I just haven't been able to make a video for it because house renovations. But now we're done. Got a new camera tripod and some better lighting. This is annoying, but I can't do anything about it because my desk has a shiny surface. Nothing I can do about that spot. But in this video, I'm going to do a little sound test with this board. You know, nothing fancy. I got some uh, copyright free music. Do a power test with the scope and some dummy loads. And, uh, you know, do a little torture test. So, give me a second here. I'll, I'll pull out my test speakers, hook up the power. I guess we'll just start with a quick sound test. I just thought I'd show the website here. Here's the board. It's normally a 675, but hey, it's on sale right now. Ends in 20, oh, six days. Uh, that'll probably be about when this video makes it up. Pretty simple. Oh, yeah, it, it doesn't come with the black volume knob. Got my power supply cables here. Your power and your speaker outputs just use these normal uh, screw down terminal strips. Shove these in here. Now I need to go get my test speakers. There you go. These are my test speakers. Uh, since I'm sure so, sure someone will ask, these are these are old Panasonic's. This is a CB-CH34. I might do a video on these. I don't know. Probably not. I do have the uh, receiver that came with these speakers too. A buddy of mine gave me to him. He was going to trash them, and I said, "Hey, can I have it?" He said, "Sure." So I grabbed him, stuck him in the back of my truck, and went home. Our left speaker. See, this is a uh, a BTL bridge tied load amplifier, so your negative cannot be tied together. It's not ground referenced. All bridge amps are that way, not just this one. Alright, here we got it hooked up. Let me flip my power supply on. My power supply is an old uh, linear 13.8 volt 10 amp jobbies. But I actually modified it so it's actually adjustable. It goes from about 2 volts to 18 under full load, but it'll go to about 21. Maybe I'll do a video on that, but that's a subject for another video. Here we go, we flip the, flip the unit on. Kind of hard to see, but it's a green LED and not blue like you would expect from Chinese products. Um, I should get a music source, shouldn't I? Alright, um, got my multimeter on the power supply here. I think I'm going to turn this up to about, I don't know, 15, 16 volts or so for now. It seems to be a common voltage in OEM products that use these Class D chips. Uh, I got my YouTube copyright safe music on the horribly outdated Kindle. Let's go ahead and grab my go-to song here and do a little bit of a sound test. And I'm not going to do it too long because, well, it's going to come through the camera with crappy speakers. And, well, I know what this board sounds like. But just for the sake of the video, let's try some. Go-to song. This thing out of the way. Ouch, that was just starting to clip right there. Actually, you know what? Let's go all the way up to uh, my supply's maximum voltage. Try to get that where you can see the screen. I got the probes backwards, but whatever. All right, my supply sits at about 21 volts, but under full load, it'll fall to about 17 and a half. So on paper, we should be able to get the 50 watts by two. That 
hurt my ears. It was a full volume and you can just see the uh, power LED starting to dim. Let's grab another song. This is some uh, kind of bassy uh, instrumental. Link to all these songs I'm playing will be down below if you want to try them out for yourself. Uh, the chip is just starting to get warm. Our inductors are still cool. They won't leave for much longer though. This board sounds just as good as the last time I used it. So let's go ahead and begin with the uh, the torture test, and then we'll scope it. I'm gonna pull up some real bass heavy music. It'll all be copyright, so I can't play it for very long. But let's see how it handles uh, low frequencies at just about full power. The pass of my ops, counting all this money, getting used to having it. My wallet costs more than what I used to having it. Uh, Fuck y'all mad at me for? Got a black card and a black phantom with a white bitch in Idaho. I do the same thing as DJ For the torture test, I'm going to use one of these, uh, what is this, XR2266 kits here I built, uh, I don't know how long ago, but I'll use it to uh, get a constant sine wave out, and then I'll hook this up to my dummy load, which is two 50 watt 8 ohm resistors on a heatsink from a fat PlayStation 2. Just a little fun fact there. Okay, now I need a power source for this. Okay, so here we are with the mess of wire. We've got our generator running into the screw terminals on this. Our right channel is going to the two 8 ohm resistors in parallel with these uh, beefy uh, jumpy jumper clips I made. And of course it's running into the scope. So we're going to run a sine wave into it at uh, 21 volts, 4 ohms. Okay, so we've got it working now. But we're going to turn the amplifier board up a little bit. I need to turn up the function generator to make sure it doesn't clip. All right, see, there's the function generator clipping, so we're gonna make sure it doesn't clip. Let's turn our volts per division up, and let's go ahead and set the uh, infamous one kilohertz sine wave. All right, that's close enough to uh, uh, one kilohertz. Our chip's warming up a little bit, but we're loaded to 4 ohms on the right channel. It's dusty. Now this is a BTL lamp, so the ground clip of the scope is connected to the negative. However, I read that that can still give you some inaccurate readings at times, so let's just try to crank our way up here. I can hear my power supply buzzing louder. Since it's linear, it's got a big iron core transformer. It's just buzzing louder and louder. Alright, so because it's a bridge amp, we have half rail voltage. So our RMS is about 10 volts, but our peak to peak is over 30. So 10 volts RMS. I don't have the math memorized, so I'm going to grab a calculator to see what that is in a 4 ohm load. So the 11 volts into the 4 ohm load is coming out to 30 watts. I'm not entirely sure that's correct, again, because it's a bridge amp, and I'm not exactly sure how you bridge or scope a bridge amp. However, we're going to leave this running. Well, I said I'm going to torture test it. Let's go ahead and just drive it right into clipping. And uh, let's see how hot it gets, why don't we? Now we wait. Don't know if you can hear it or not, but the coils are actually whining. Ooh. It's shutting in and off. It's going in and out of protect. Is it overheating or is it current limiting? Yeah, it's just going back and forth. 
Let me grab the thermometer. Uh, because this is an infrared thermometer, I can't really point it at a heat sink because it just reflects off. Well, this has thermal vias on the bottom, so let's try to read these thermal vias right under the chip. Oh, yeah, I'd say it's getting a little toasty. <laughs> say 190 because this thing's not purely accurate. What about our uh, inductors? Uh, they're sitting about 120. So, I'm going to shut this poor guy off. Once it cools down, I have something even more intense for it to do. This is a factory Ford 8-inch subwoofer that came from the Shaker 500 sound system in a Mustang. Uh, this, the reason I picked this for our torture test is because of this rating right here. 1.2 ohms by 2. I'm not going to run this amp at 1.2 ohms because I think that's going to be a bit much for it. I don't even think the internal pass transistors are rated for that much current. But I will put the coils into series. This will give us about 2.5 ohms. So our last test was thermal, thermal protection. This will be over current. I'm sure of it. So I've got the subwoofer hooked up. Now because it's a subwoofer, it has a ear-piercingly loud peak at about 800 hertz or so. So uh, I got my Sansui SE8 equalizer here. So we're just gonna straight cut that stuff down. And maybe boost the bass a little bit. This thing looks like it's moving a whole inch. Ooh, now our inductors are actually hotter than our IC is. I mean, they're both warm, but inductors win for heat. That ain't working. That's not enough for it either. This should get it. I uh, got the function generator back up. I'm playing in, I don't know, 80 hertz or something. I'm, I've ran out of sockets. I can't plug my scope into it. Let's see if we can get to go into overcurrent with this two and a half ohm load. Oh. And there we go. Ouch. All right, our inductors are roasty, roasty. Our chip is... I mean, I can barely keep my finger on it, but our inductors are roasty. And also, our two 1,000 microfarad Sanyo filter caps are uh, quite warm. Not as hot as the inductors are. Okay, I think this video has ran off long enough. If you guys want to check out the amplifier board, link is in the description. I definitely recommend it. As I said, I've had this board about a month, and I've used it as my daily driver for... Uh, about a week or so, and it does sound pretty good. The only thing that kind of bugs me is these uh, filter caps are kind of uh, crooked, but I could fix that with soldering iron. I think that uh, is enough for today. So if you guys like the video, uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Wow, that's hot. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.